What's going on, world? It's your boy, Kuya P. This is the Nerds Rule the World. Today, I'm excited to interview Kevin Houlihan, uh, author uh, of the amazing novel, So You Want to Run a Country from Akashic Books, arriving on March 5th. Make sure you get those pre-orders in so you can enjoy this book. I know I am looking forward to uh, t putting my eyes on it. Uh, you know Ke Kevin from The Brothers Lot uh, and that amazing novel. And now we are getting So You Want to Run a Country on March 5th. Kevin, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you, Patrick. It's really wonderful to be here. Thanks for this opportunity. Oh, most definitely, sir. So um, as I was doing a little bit of my research, uh, and we'll actually talk about, you know, the plot theme of this book. Um, you're from Dublin. You're from Ireland. And uh, moved to Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I was yeah. curious when I was kind of like putting your own personal story and the themes of this book together a little bit, if maybe that journey and that you know uh getting accustomed to america and the crazy wildness things that is american i i could say it i'm american we are weird wild people um did that inspire this book part of it yeah definitely the the, the whole idea of this is set set in a future time that's not specified but new york has rebranded itself as newer york and Grand Central Station is Grander Central Station and stuff like that. And it's just, I guess it's my initial experiences of New York as being really, really wild, taken to taken to a further extreme. It's yeah. bigger, it's brassier, it's bolder, it's crazier. It, it so, was more once you finally get here, I would assume, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. you, you get one thing from television and the media, but then it's one thing to actually be living in this country and just see the insanity that it is. So yeah. in regards to our country, you have this book, So You Want to Run a Country, which I think could also be inspired from pretty much the last 10 years recently. You know, uh, I don't like to get into politics too much. I live in Washington, D.C., so I'm heavily into politics. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, I have my thoughts on that. But uh, what inspired the, this journey? And again, from these travels and uh, what made you put pen to pad or fingers to keyboard and start, you know, putting the foundation of So You Want to Run a Country? Yeah, I, I started out with this idea years ago of I had a guy who was just wandering around New York City and he had this statue bolted to a skateboard that he pulled around behind him. And I kind of had it in my head. He lived in a pipe somewhere on a on an abandoned lot and there was something kind of special going on. And I couldn't figure out what the something special was. Put it away. A few years later, I went, oh, yeah, okay. Maybe he could be part of a reality show. He's a part of a reality show. And it's called So You Want to Run a Country. And then I had to figure out a place to put it. So I didn't know where to put it. So I invented this country. Basically a country that's been locked away from the rest of the world for almost 100 years. And it kind of went through a, a, a great leap backwards where they sort of abandoned all modern stuff and just went back into like medieval times. So this place has suddenly upped and went, hey, we want to host this. And they have their own reasons for that, but I'm not going to get into that. That's part of the yeah. We the won't spoil of the story. No spoilers. We won't spoil. How long did it take for you to co come up with the, the first draft of this, how, and or how many drafts uh, until you figured out the shell? You know, the, the the meat of what you were trying to tell. Um, I'd say at least five. I thought I was done. The winter of 2019, I thought I was done. And I showed it to my publisher and he went, this is great, but it's wild. It's all over the place and it's t just too long. It was 500 pages. Mm. So then we worked, we went through three rewrites to kind of get to the real core of the story and just trim the plot. And, you know, it's it's what they always say. Um, you kill your darlings. The bits that you enjoyed writing the most are usually the bits where you lost the oh. run of yourself, you're having too much fun, you're you're kind of patting yourself on the back and you you get out of control. And I found, yeah, some of the bits I really enjoyed doing, they were they were not doing any work. They were fun to do, but they were kind of getting in the way. So yeah, I'd say five, maybe five drafts. Got it. I feel that in my soul, Kevin, as a as a <laughs> writer myself. Uh yeah, you we get we indulge in certain things we like. 
right? Yeah. So of course we elaborate, we kind of build upon it, but then it, if it doesn't serve the story, um, I also work in film, you know, and then you have to adapt, you know, film uh, uh -huh. work to film and you're definitely cutting a lot. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, oh, yeah I, films, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> film, film is really unforgiving. You can't have any, you can only have any dead wood in there. Love it. Where uh, I'm sure you're going to get comparisons to like the Hunger Games when you have like reality shows and stuff. Uh, was there anything like that or was there anything that actually out that inspired you uh, beyond like you're traveling? You moved from Dublin to, to New York. Uh, you saw the skateboarder, which I think is wonderful. I love little uh, pieces like that, that sprout uh, light bulbs in imagination. Yeah. Uh, was there anything like that that, you know, is, and or when you're hitting roadblocks uh, in coming up with the concepts? No, I can't. I can't. There, there was one point. The the show didn't exist at one point. I just had this guy, for some reason, going to this strange country that was re-emerging from the Dark Ages. And then I went, hmm, what if all this was being filmed and broadcast? So then I kind of was, you know, you're looking at things like The Bachelor and th those kind of things where people are competing at Survivor. Yeah. And people are watching this stuff. You go, okay, so wouldn't it be fun if you got people who are completely incompetent to do jobs? And I went, okay, let's go get a bit bigger. Get people who have no clue to run a country. And that's that. That was the idea. It just kind of started small with a game show idea, and it just gradually I just went, yeah, push it all the way, see what happens. I feel that. Uh so I'm sure there's messages in regards to that without, you know, trying to be direct and in your face. Like, I I'll put it out there. I feel some way about Donald Trump, you know, whatever anybody else feels, you know, I just, you know, have my own feelings about that. But uh, is that is there certain kind of subtext and messages with what you're just you're trying to do with the form of entertainment and in, in, uh, in the novel? Yeah, but I don't think I don't. It's not it's not a partisan political thing, but I think. The bigger thing I'm getting at is oh, a lot of a lot of politics is public relations and spin. And so when you when you kind of move it and you just kind of go, let's put it up as, as if it was a game show. Mm. And then you can sort of say, yeah, you got it. You can't take much of this stuff. On the, what you see on the surface is not necessarily what what is going on. And you, kind of, you know, it's 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 almost like where we're headed. Mm -hmm. People don't believe in elections, so why not just have a, you know, run elections as a as a popularity competition on TV and have people vote, right? You know what they do on America's Got Talent. I see you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and using them, you know, when we can use this medium to. <laughs> when we feel like that's where the world is heading to use this medium to kind of like play that out uh and and see how that goes it it can be quite interesting yeah there's a there's there's one scene scene later late in the book where there's a trial in in this country and they have their, own, their very own particular way of doing things but the the producers of the show convince them that it needs to be broadcast and the way trials are conducted in in this future time is it's broadcast and people kind of basically tweet their what they think the verdict should be. And then it it goes with the majority of the viewers. There's no actual judging going on, except mm. you've been judged by whoever happens to be watching. Interesting. It's like a literal trial by public opinion. Wow. It's a kind of, yeah. My mind goes to dark places <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> what do you think the people who enjoyed your work with the Brothers Lot uh, and now they they come on to so you want to run a country. What uh, do you do? You think uh, is this like a night and day thing? Or did you enjoy kind of like you know maybe I don't know if you changed it up from your style with the Brothers Lot to to penning this uh, book? Yeah, it's definitely it's not the Brothers Lot too. And I warned people who who I knew that it was so much not that. Yeah, I mean it's a completely different setting. It's a completely different genre. It's 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 set in the future rather than the past, but and it's the same kind of thing where there's where there's there's humor. There's a lot of humor and absurdity, 
and then there's every so often the bottom just drops out and there's a little oh oh dark moment to kind of make yeah. the comedy work yeah there's a point to it but it's um i think some of the people who've who've read it and reviewed it so far say it's very very different but the same kind of humor and satire is there so if they enjoyed that they'd probably enjoy this even though the subject matter is quite different uh, so uh, i i dig that uh, as creatives you know we like to switch things up you know uh you know the because while it's work you know it's also you know you don't want it to be work so sometimes it's fun to play in a different wheelhouse yeah. genre yeah. um so so with having this uh put completed and, and now arriving to everybody from akashic on march 5th um uh how are you feeling now with it uh, being available and, and moving forward to the next book? Because, uh, you know, I I'm sure uh, you're going to be in demand after, you know, the fans love the brothers a lot. You know, that did well. And now with this, uh, uh, I'm, what other like ideas are spewing in, in the brain uh, of Kevin Houlihan? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that it's coming out. It's it's been a, It's been a long process, but I think everybody who's ever sort of been published or performed or anything you're always there's always a bit in the back of your head going oh my god i'm a fraud i'm going to be found out there's you know there's I always a certain too. nervousness um but it, it'll be great and i'm really excited to see the reaction i've had very good feeling about it so far um any reaction that there has been has been really positive so i'm excited by that um and then you know there'll be sort of readings and book festivals and whatever and that will be fun. I'd prefer to be holed up in a in a cabin somewhere writing the next one. But oh, that's, man. you know, you got to do it. This is part of it. <laughs> well, it's fun to put the product out there. It's also fun, yeah. the process. And it's fantastic. I mean, some of yeah. the people that you meet when you're sort of just doing stuff in bookstores and, and yeah. readings and that, it's 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 fabulous. I'm still friends with some people that I met like 10 years ago, reading the Brothers Lot at book festivals and places. So oh, amazing. It's, it's great. Um, as I have to ask, as a filmmaker, like, uh, have you thought of adaptations to that degree? I, I this has again, you know, Hunger Games was very successful. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you see this being adapted, uh, or or the Brothers Lot, or just any of your works in the future? Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a pipe dream when the Brothers Lot was done. I had, I had it cast in my head almost, and uh, yeah, it was. And I wanted Terry Gilliam to direct the Brothers Lot. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that was that. That, that was the. Well, you didn't say was, pipe dream. <laughs> that was the pipe. But dream. hey, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you got a dream big. And I'm looking at this one, and I kind of go, hmm, "This might be a this might be a Christopher Nolan gig." Ooh, okay. there's a lot. There's a lot of big mad architecture and in things like that in this country. This yeah, inner azure, as I call it. Has yeah. sort of a lot of strange, strange buildings and sort of secret, secret passages and stuff. I love that. Did you have fun like coming up with those little concepts, or was, or what maybe piqued you to go that route with it? Did any any input from family, friends, or just you know what? I'll just kind of do this slight change so that way it's somewhat familiar, but it has its own kind of like freshness to it. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the things I find myself doing is I, I write the stuff I like to read. Ooh, exactly. And I I love books that and films that create a world and pull you into it. And you know, you know it's not possible what they're telling you, but for the purposes of the story, you buy it a hundred percent. And you can do things when when you when you create a world you can you can have a lot of fun and you can kind of tweak things and you can make you can make things that we take for granted and don't question you can suddenly make them strange yes and then you go oh yeah i never thought about that that's really weird or you can take really weird things and you can turn them around and make them seem kind of normal and it's all that playing with the world i find really really enjoyable and it just sort of I um I can't I can't draw a straight line, but I love like fantastical art. Agreed. Yeah. Same, same. I love that. As 
uh, as a creative myself as well. I that's why we do what we do. I love yeah. that. So are you looking at from changing the genres like you did with Brothers Lot to this one? You did something different uh, for the next project. Uh, are, are we staying? Uh, are we exploring another genre? Are we going to find a new lane? What are we doing? I don't know. I have two things kind of in the back on the back burners. One of them is a sort of counterfactual ancient history book. Okay. Where uh, St. Patrick comes to Ireland in the fifth century. And um, whatever's going on, people have these sort of precognitions. And they kind of go, mm, no, don't think so. Not buying that. So it remains this sort of pagan culture of adoring trees and rivers and mountains. Interesting. Just sort of playing with that I that kind of historical what if idea. I like that. And then there's another one. There was this there was an airport built in this town in Spain, in the middle of Spain, during the boom times. Big international airport, billions of dollars, went bust. And it was massive modern airport. And it was sitting there oh, for wow. idle for 10, 12 years. And I had this idea of re retelling Don Quixote de la Mancha in this place. So Don Quixote is the one security guard who has to be there for insurance reasons. And Sancho Panza is the guy who has to drive the empty shuttle bus from the nearest town up and back and up and back because it's in, it's in the contract. And then wow. just taking that. And I lived in Spain, so I always loved that, that book. And just trying to flip it a little bit and tell contemporary stories that way. I did so, that. Yeah, you know, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff to play with and get overexcited about and get overindulgent in. And eventually, it'll it'll be something or it won't. But like you say, it's work. But do you have to stretch yourself a little bit and make it playful too? Yeah, and have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the time. Have fun with it. I love that, and I appreciate you sharing that. It's it's such. It just shows how universal uh, creativity can be, and just. Uh, how you can also get around blocks because uh, mm -hmm. I always find myself that because just going at it all the time, you know, with with what we do. Um, but it's a treasure uh, when you find it and you, you get it. And we have now. So you want to run a country from Akashic Books arriving March 5th. All of your hard work, five years in the making. Uh, congrats to you, Kevin. It's a pleasure Thank to you, chat Patrick. with you about it. And uh, I look forward to what you're going to do next. And I look forward to myself reading this book, y'all. So everybody, make sure you get yours. You can pre-order it right now. Uh, everywhere from Akashic Books, Kevin Houlihan, So You Want to Run a Country, March 5th. Uh, it, again, a pleasure chatting with you, sir. Uh, and uh, you, you inspired a little bit of creativity. And and uh, I, I had a few thoughts come in my head. Um, my real name is Patrick, by the way. I go by Kuya hosting. Uh, but my dad is Irish Catholic. And uh, uh -huh. I've been to Dublin. I've traveled <laughs> all over Ireland. And uh, when you brought up St. Patrick, uh, yeah, you made me think of my, my namesake as well as uh, <laughs> uh, I, I have a story about the Cliffs of Moher that I've uh, always wanted to do because it was so beautiful. Uh, and just some other places I visited there that, uh, yeah, you just reminded me of some inspiration that I, again, when we get so busy with things, uh, it take could take five yeah. years to come up with your story. And uh, I, I love the subtle reminders. Revisit that and, mm -hmm. and, and, and go back to it uh, because, you know, when you hit a block, then you come away yeah. from it. Um, but I'm happy that uh, we now have So You Want to Run a Country, sir. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, Patrick. It was great to meet you. A pleasure. Everybody, Kevin Houlihan, So yeah. You Want to Run a Country, arriving from Akashic Books on March 5th. I'm Kuya P. This is Nerds Rule the World.